prior to Blaze Fielding becoming one of the most well-known heroines in all of gaming, the world of beat-em-ups had already given us an iconic star in the genre, Tyrus Bloody Flair, one of the three main playable characters who would show up in the original Golden Axe game, way back in 1989. Golden Axe was one of the Mega Drive's first killer apps, and a distinctive game that was easy to separate from the pack. This was in part due to the memorable cast of characters that the game would bring to the table, including none other than the first lady of beat-em-ups herself. Today we are going to look at this woman in a biographical context and celebrate the history of this sultry sword-wielding maniac. This ladies and gentlemen is beat-em-up biopics and the story of Tyrus Flair. Woo! The 1980s are drawing to a close, and we are at the dawn of the 16-bit era. A little game called Golden Axe has just hit arcades, a Sega title primarily developed by Makoto Uchida, after his successful work previously on Auto Beast. His game, inspired by Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and Conan the Barbarian, would include plenty of great characters, including the female focus of our video now. Tyrus would debut in the Maiden entry in the series that was released both in the arcades, on the Mega Drive and on other home formats. Flair would debut with a particularly distinctive look, appearing wearing a pair of red leather boots with a red and white bikini like attire to show off her athletic physique. Combine this with the large sword she wields in fights, Tyrus is every bit as dangerous as she is beautiful. In the game's story, Tyrus was a former princess of the Firewood Kingdom, where she lived happily with her parents, the King and Queen. On her 17th birthday, her comfortable life would come to a grinding halt as an evil army led by Death Adder invaded her kingdom. During these events, her father and the kingdom's army tried to fight them off, only to be defeated. Tyrus managed to evade capture during these events due to being hidden in a secret room in the castle by her mother. After the battle had ended, she would soon learn that Death Adder had killed everyone in the castle, including her parents, leading her to cry and become angry at the gods for allowing such things to unfold. From then on, she swore to get stronger and avenge her kingdom. Depending on which version of the game you play, the timeline can talk somewhat, leading to these events unfolding slightly differently. However, in all scenarios, Death Adder ends up on top here. After the kingdom fell, Tyrus would end up training with a group of Amazon women, who would train her in the arts of swordsmanship and fire magic, which is why she is so deadly in the Golden Axe games. Six years after Death Adder took the kingdom, now at the age of 23, or 20 years later in the PC Engine version, age 37 I guess, Tyrus was ready for her revenge. Alongside Axe Battler and Gilius Thunderhead, she finds their friend Alex wounded in the old Firewood Kingdom. He tells them that the King and the Princess from the Southwood Kingdom have been taken by Death Adder and asked to avenge him before passing away. This is the exact event that triggers the adventure found in the 1989 Golden Axe, where the trio venture to Death Adder's castle to try and slay the villain once and for all. The legendary journey unfolds in the game, finally culminating with a hard battle with Death Adder himself, who is wielding the legendary Golden Axe. Tyrus is eventually victorious and saves the king and his daughter, bringing peace to the land. Now, for most after this grueling adventure, many people would retire from combat from here on out. However, Tyrus was no normal woman. Three years after the events of the original game, she would be called back into action for Golden Axe 2. In this sequel, Tyrus re-emerges, this time wearing a plain red bikini paired with a new silver headband. I am not quite sure what sort of training she took part in over this period, however somehow her hips and boobs managed to expand significantly. Maybe she just had an unreported child back home, who knows. Anyway, in this second game, she is fighting due to an evil Lord of Darkness who was sealed away a long time ago known as Dark Gold, returning, who has led the world into chaos again. Like Death Adder before him, Dark Gold 2 manages to steal the Golden Axe, which he wields to power his army to bring destruction to the land. The terrific trio join forces once again to embark on a similar adventure, eventually managing to snuff out this foe too. Tyrus's third appearance would be in the Zelda-like Golden Axe Warrior for the Sega Master System. In this game, it is mentioned by a villager early on that Death Adder is back, 
and he has killed Princess Tyrus. However, it turns out fortunately that the villager was ill-informed as Tyrus managed to escape and resumes training for revenge. The player eventually finds her hidden in the northeast of the world map, who awards the player with a fire magic scroll. However, that would be it for her in this one. Golden Axe 3 is set in the future, with the non-human Gilius Thunderhead being the only surviving member of the original trio. The game however does feature a very similar looking character known as Sara Byrne. In fact, due to her similarities, she was mistakenly called Tyrus Flare in the Sega Genesis collection port of the game, adding a touch of confusion to the Golden Axe timeline. Moving even further along in the franchise's timeline, we have the fighting game Golden Axe The Duel for the Sega Saturn. While Tyrus does not appear as a playable fighter here, her descendant and reigning princess of the kingdom, Milan Flare, is present. The game is set many years after the last war with Death Adder, however, the magical axe which Gilius Thunderhead used to slay Death Adder last time around with has been rediscovered once more. Over time, the power of the axe has grown to new levels, leading to numerous warriors fighting it out to obtain the powerful weapon. Milan Flair is amongst the many combatants competing for the prize, in the hope that it would permanently end the threat of her kingdom falling to foreign invaders. After this point, the Golden Axe franchise would lay dormant for many years with no new entries in the series until 2008, 13 years after the previous Sega Saturn game. This game, titled Golden Axe Beast Riders, would see Tyrus Flair return to action in her most prominent role in the series so far featuring for the first time as a solo star carrying the Golden Axe name. I cannot find any indication to present where these events fall into the Golden Axe timeline, so I am just going to assume the game is a reboot. In her role as lead protagonist, Tyrus Flair is presented as a great Amazon warrior and defender of the Arixian Priestesses, a sect of dragon worshippers from the Isle of Axia. Like in other appearances, she is skilled in combat and magic, but there is a danger rising all around her. The Isle is invaded by Death Adder and his army, who are after the power of an ancient dragon titan. Tyrus sets out on an adventure wielding swords and sorcery to stop him. In this reboot, Tyrus has been given a complete redesign. Her lovely long hair has been chopped off, and she is seen wearing war paint for the first time. Her costume changes throughout the adventure, depending on what players have equipped, but her original outfit, from her classic Golden Axe appearances, can still be found in the game for those who search hard enough. In another departure, rather than being restricted to a sword, she instead wields a whole range of weapons, including even the Golden Axe itself. The game eventually ends when Tyrus manages to use the Golden Axe to defeat Death Adder in his Titan form. After the game received terrible reception, we have never seen Tyrus or any of the rest of the Golden Axe crew in a new adventure since. But taking the recent success of Streets of Rage 4 into the equation, I would not count out seeing a new game in the classic Golden Axe format being released to revive the franchise down the line. Flair has a storied history, but thus far nothing has topped her maiden outing back in 1989. But regardless of this, I still think she is one of the greatest heroines in all of gaming, and her presence helped make Golden Axe as memorable as it is. For me, Tyrus Flair will always be an all-time great, and that should be celebrated. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Tyrus story. As usual, please do not hesitate to let me know your thoughts on this video, and who you would like me to showcase in the next beat-em up biopics. Cheerio! Actually, just something quick to say before I go. This video was actually made all the way back in December of 2020, but until now it was only ever available to the generous people who support this channel through Patreon. As always, thank you for taking that extra step towards helping to secure this channel's future. If you too would like to join my amazing Top Pack Gaming Maniacs out there, I have an entire playlist of patron-only content that can be unlocked by contributing just a little bit each month. Your backing can also see you receiving your name in the credits, along with receiving early access to each of my videos before everyone else. Speaking of these gods amongst men, special thank yous go out to a murder of crows, Carl Johnson, Aeropola Lopez Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey I. Marsh Senior, Rowan Dinched, Evan Balder, Philip Manth, Azra Rakai, Jock Quinn Varela, Michael Calix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, 
Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, EC Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Capcom vs SNK, Hermes Gonzalez, Man Shovel, Michael Hall, Sang He, Norma Stitz, Langston Miller, Noob, Sarah Powell, Vlamic Rene, Marvin Oraliga, TOG Driver, Louis Fiant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Rick 67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, and everybody else who backs my channel on the Patreon platform. Thank you.